It's extremely touching, you know, to, to get emails from someone saying, you know, boards was tough for me a couple different times and I, I finally passed it uh, after watching your videos and that's so rewarding, I can't describe it. It's What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Adam Nessum Show. Today, I have an awesome guest I'm super excited to interview. We have Dr. Alexander D'Angelo. He is a physical medicine and rehabilitation physician, also known as a physiatrist. He treats a variety of musculoskeletal and orthopedic conditions. And beyond his clinical work, Dr. D'Angelo is an entrepreneur. He serves as CEO and founder of PM&R Recap, which is the most popular PM&R residency board review resource, and actually a review resource I use myself as a PM&R resident. So Dr. D'Angelo, thanks so much for coming on today. Adam, thanks so much for having me. Cool. So um, I'm super excited, even selfishly, to, <laughs> to interview you because uh, I know you have a wealth of PM&R knowledge. But for any listeners or viewers who haven't heard of you before. Can you just give a little bit of your background, how you got to where you are today, going through you know med school, residency, yeah. PM&R, and, and all of that? Yeah. Uh, I'm a teacher. Uh, I've thought about how to introduce myself you know, to various people over time and on this podcast and everything. I'm a teacher. It's who I am at heart. Uh, it's always been what I wanted to do in some fashion. And so um, I think what I managed to do was find my way uh, through the sciences. I've always liked science and everything. I've managed to navigate my way through, you know, pre-medicine and, and medical school and into uh, as much teaching as I possibly can. And that's kind of how all this came about. But myself, I was always interested in science growing up, you know, kind of stereotypical. I want to do science and I want to help people. And biology is kind of fun, right? So, uh, we, you know, I explored that uh, growing up in high school. I thought that was that was that was a blast. Uh, it, it came. Um, uh, it, it, it was uh, it was exciting. It was exciting learning about, you know, the human body and everything. So I thought uh, my, my dad's actually a retired orthopedic surgeon. So medicine was already, and my mom's a, a retired uh, nurse. Uh, oh, wow. So uh, there was so, a lot of medicine in your family already. <laughs> there was a lot of medicine in the family already. So it, it wasn't like, like predetermined or anything. I was not pushed into any sort of, you know, role or career whatsoever. Uh, the, the door was pretty open, which, uh, was fortunate, I guess. Right. But, um, there was a, a few things that, that kind of grabbed me, uh, you know, filmmaking, uh, some other, you know, interest of mine, music and everything. But um, uh, I don't know, nothing, nothing seemed as um, curious to me, I guess, as, as some, doing something in science, whether it's being a scientist, a professor, or just being a doctor. So I went through high school and, you know, I, I, I then went to university and I sort of was pre-med by default because I, I, I was just kind of thinking like, okay, I'll, I'll be pre-med, I guess, uh, almost dragging my feet a little bit uh, until something else grabs me. And I'm, and I figure out like, yes, I'm going to get, I'm going to get pulled in some direction. Um, and I just kept, kept falling in love with my science classes that I was taking in, in the pre-med uh, realm. I always found something interesting, whether it was physics or organic chemistry, whatever it was, I always found something interesting to grab onto. And, um, uh, learn its intricacies. And um, I don't know, I kind of liked taking tests too, as, as gross as that sounds. Um, well, the you definitely need knowledge. to like taking tests to go through this career. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly doesn't hurt, right? Yeah. So the, the application of that knowledge, you know, applying what you learned, I thought was, was fun. Um, I would even kind of like uh, such a nerd. I would, I would just like practice kind of teaching this stuff, just saying it out loud. Um, uh, you know, to, to try to better understand it, I figured if you could teach it and if you could talk about it, you could try to do that confidently. It'll help you understand it. I always learn as I'm talking and teaching. And so I would kind of like do that as I'm studying. Um, so like, so yeah, um, you know, when went, went through pre-med. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I was going to say, and then how'd you go from, um, obviously you next was med school and then how did you land on PM&R? Like, did you even know? And for those of you yeah. who aren't, who are, who are yeah. listening, who might be like, what's PM&R? So that's physical medicine and rehabilitation. It, I feel like it used to, yeah. we used to say it was the, one of the best kept specialties in medicine, but I feel like that secret yeah. might be out. Um, maybe it'll be out even more after this podcast, but how did you, did you know going in what that even was? Cause I didn't, when no. I was going to medical school, no. can you tell a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. In med school, I was dead set. I was going to be an ophthalmologist. Uh, I had everything lined up, you know, and then at the very end of my third year, I finally, that's just the way med school is structured. You, you don't, you take a leap of faith with what you want to do. And then you, you like barely get to rotate in it at the end of your third year. And that's when I realized, ah, oh, I'm kind of bored. I don't think I really want to do this crisis time. And, um, 
I, I had known about PM&R, physical medicine and rehab. Uh, I had known about it and heard about it. And I, you know, I heard, uh, you know, whatever memes and, and stuff about it. And it, it seemed interesting. It seemed like, it seemed like something that wouldn't, you know, I, I like having work-life balance. I want to, as a classic physiatrist, I want to exercise. I want to get plenty of sleep. I want to, you know, be, spend time with my family and have good work-life balance and everything. And so I, I knew those things about it, or at least knew that kind of meme knowledge about the specialty without, without having any further detail about it. So I just scrambled together a uh, hometown rotation with my dad was still practicing at the time. He, he hooked me up with a local physiatrist and I rotated with him and I thought it was great. I mean, just being with patients as they rehabbed through their injuries or their stroke or whatever it was. Uh, and I thought, you gotta be kidding me. We get to actually do this. And, uh, and it's a medical specialty. This is great. And, um, uh, and I started thinking even more and more, I was really, really, I guess I kind of still am, but I was really into working out and fitness and health and everything. And sports medicine and the musculoskeletal system came very naturally with that, with all the running and weight training and everything that I was doing on the side. Um, so I, I, I ended up realizing that I was a physiatrist the entire time hmm. uh, in like, I like my that. life, I like that a lot. my adult life and my medical school. I didn't know it, but I was the whole time. And so it's just hard. You have no exposure to it. And, uh, and if you stumble into it and it's a good fit for you, it's, it's an amazing click. And that's what it was for me. I, uh, just finally took the leap of saying, all right, I'm going to go find out more about this thing. Loved it. And, uh, you know, the rest was history, had a blast interviewing. When I interviewed, you actually would fly around the country. Uh, yeah, I miss those days. I didn't, <laughs> I, mine were all virtual. <laughs> so I am kind of jealous of all the virtual interviews, uh, actually. Um, it was, it was, a, it was tough just flying, you know, three different places a week. Um, and just living that suitcase life, I guess so it, it was really fun. But a part of me is like, oh man, if I could have just done that on a computer, that would have been great. But um, that was my that was my kind of journey. And I I always thought I'm gonna you know because I I love uh, ath athletics and all that I'm gonna do sports medicine. And um, I I kind of do now uh, in my practice. I'm not fellowship trained, but um, it's musculoskeletal and and everything that I do. So that that's how very long ramble of how I kind of came into it. No, that's awesome. And I think super insightful uh, for the listeners to see, because we, we have a lot of pre-meds and med students that watch and a lot of them are, when I speak to them, they're so set on one specialty in going in. And I say over 50% of med students, if not higher, switch by the end. And I was the same way. I didn't originally know about PM&R and, and I really didn't get much exposure until third year of medical school as well. And you, you really have to seek it out because it's not really a core rotation for most medical uh, students. So um, it's it's never too late to find physiatry for those that are interested. Now, yeah. you, kind of, you kind of mentioned this, but you didn't you do a fellowship. So right after the PM&R residency, which is one year of internship and then three years residency after that, so four years in total, sometimes people will do a specialty. So there's sports, there's pain, yeah. there's TBI, there's all these different specialties. Can you uh, tell me a little bit more about why you decided not to? It feels yeah. like I'm in New York and it feels like every, not everyone, but it's, if you're going to go into an academic physician, it's kind of pushed to get the fellowship. Yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think that yeah. that doesn't always have to be the case. So can you, I think, uh, give some insight into that decision and how you practice yeah. now and what's available to you. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, I, I rec, I, I think doing a fellowship is an excellent idea and I actually do nudge a lot of my residents that I train to do a fellowship. I do nudge them to do that. I think it's an excellent idea. I, there were nine others or eight, I think eight others in my class of residents, all of them did fellowships except me. And I just thought, and they're, they're amazing. They're brilliant physicians and they're doing amazing things in their areas. I think doing a fellowship is a great idea. Um, it give, it has you, you build skills, you build knowledge, and you also gain access to it. You know, that piece of paper that you get with graduating fellowship gives you a golden ticket access to, um, you know, like, like a, a dedicated sports medicine population or um, uh, a spinal injection population that you may not have access to, that an employer might not actually give you access to um, without that fellowship uh, certificate. So I do think it's got a lot of value beyond the education and training itself. However, for myself, I kind of thought this might be very nerdy sounding. I kind of thought my fellowship is going to be like education and, and building this website and doing that. And that is going to be my focus, my identity, my uh, fellowship, if you will. Um, I knew I wanted to do this. The whole thing was brewing and, and being concocted and designed uh, throughout my fourth year of residency as I um, basically built it uh, in the background and got ideas, got graphic design going and everything. And I think that process was... I, I want my identity to be an educator, um, 
I want that to be my professional identity foremost, I think. And so I might as well do a fellowship in that and have this be my ex, like extra training, my extra piece of physiatry that I offer to the world. Um, which I love that. Actual yeah. fellowship training would have been wonderful and great. And I actually still toy with that idea sometimes. But this, that was my thought was I really want to teach and I really want that to be my fellowship focus. So that's kind of what I did. No, that's awesome. And you're definitely doing teaching and reaching more students than you probably and residents than you would be even maybe in an academic position sometimes. I mean, now we have uh, residents from all across the country that are using your resources. I know a lot of my fellow co-residents were asking me to, to find out any uh, uh, access we can get from you for PM&R recap. So I know it's a very desired product. So I think that's kind of what you were alluding to was your service PM&R recap mm -hmm. and the board's review videos, which I feel like not only for, are for board's review, but like I'm starting an EM on my EMG rotation next month. So I know I'm already starting to look at your videos for EMG. Can you actually explain to everyone what is PM&R recap? I guess a little bit you, you mentioned briefly, it started in your yeah. fourth year of residency mm -hmm. and kind of the growth that it's had and um, what your mission is with it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a teacher at heart. It's who I am. I can't get away from it and I love it. And so what basically PM&R recap is a, is a PM&R you know, neuro MSK, that's kind of what PM&R is. It's just a mouthful. I wish we could change the name, but it's a, it's a, um, it's a, a, a board review service for medical students and PM&R residents and attending physicians who want to brush up on their clinical skills. Um, it's a way to painlessly and very comfortably pass the boards without the boards running your life, you know, and looming over your head as a, like a specter of the, the entire residency you have, both the written boards and oral boards. Um, they're tough. You know, they hang and they kind of dangle your career in front of you and uh, employers want board certification and it's stressful. And I thought, man, does it need to, <laughs> it's very expensive too, right? Uh, the board, oh, the yeah. board exam everything in medicine like, is expensive. <laughs> it's just, uh, there's a, a medicine tax uh, every, along edge, each step of the way you pay thousands of bucks for each board exam and it's tough, but a very stress, stressful process. And I wanted to find a way that I could remove that stress and make it easy and give your life back to you a little bit. I'm very passionate about that. I want people to have their lives back and not feel like they have to shove their nose in a book. Um, so anyway, it's a website where you can watch um, uh, PM&R board review, high yield board relevant topics. It's about 35 hours of, of uh, video content. Uh, and and uh, there's a question bank attached to it, a multiple choice question bank of, of, of like 900 questions. Uh, that, that I wrote that's uh, multiple choice. Uh, there's a mobile app you can access all these things on. You can watch videos as many times as you like, and you can take the question bank as many times as you like. You can focus on missed questions or different categories of questions, all in high yield areas of PM&R, traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, rheumatology, musculoskeletal, EMGs, like you said, electromyography. And uh, I, I wanted to create the service that I wish I had. And so that's what the website is. You can do practice questions. Uh, you can do, you can watch our videos. You can do uh, interactive oral boards cases, uh, which kind of simulate you going through an oral boards case with a tough examiner. Um, is that, so, is that live or is that, um, you give like sample cases? Cause I don't know how new, I don't remember seeing that at least when I originally checked out a PM uh, yeah. and recap is, can yeah. you expand on that? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was, uh, spring, oh, I can't even remember spring 2022 or 2021, one of those years where we, I think it was more 2021, where we launched our oral boards uh, cases. So yeah, that was not an immediate product. Uh, what I wanted to do is pass my oral boards before I could offer, feel comfortable offering fair, something fair like enough. that. So I did that and then I immediately got to work uh, uh, writing those cases and, and publishing them. Um, and so that that's just another feature that has been rolled out. Uh, which is exciting. So yeah, it's not actually videos. Those are, are text-based, text-based adventures, right? Those oral board cases. And um, we do plan to offer live courses on both written and oral board content, just uh, like a weekend high yield uh, boot camp type course for both of those things and actually a mock uh, oral board exam as well uh, as like live part two class um, has not been officially announced. Uh, maybe, maybe this is the unofficial announcement that <laughs> that's a little, going to be taking Maybe place. a little teaser. We'll say <laughs> it's a little bit of a teaser. <laughs> So I rambled cool. too much. I'm sorry, but no, yeah. no, no, it's good. It's all great info. I mean, I love just from a resident perspective, I, I haven't worked through all your content yet, but I've loved, I did it. I started going through the lectures before uh, I started the PM&R residency. And then now I'm just trying to watch them before each relevant rotation. Cause it is, even though it's, 
35 hours, which doesn't sound like too much. It's very dense content because it's, it's all the high yield info. So I think it's something, do you recommend, I guess, for residents work through it throughout their residency, not just start it later on when yes. it's towards prep time in their fourth year? Like how, yes. how would you say you, your style of teaching is as well as uh, how's the best way to use the, the resource? Yeah, I think whatever resource you're using, whether it's mine or, or a textbook, uh, the marathon approach is is what I always recommend. Just starting early, doing a little bit each day, and that's it. Basically, never cramming. Uh, maybe 30 minutes each day throughout your four, your your uh, three or four years of residency, depending on what you want to call it within PMNR, because you have that initial intern year, which is separate. But yeah, the marathon approach, just a little bit each day, I think works. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to read my textbook first, which is just the PowerPoints in a, in um, book format, formatted. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you necessarily have to read that first and kind of annotate it and try to digest it first before you watch the videos. The whole thing is designed that you can watch the videos first and just annotate along in your own uh, textbook, which has little space, white space uh, built into it. So you can um, uh, take notes. Um, but I actually had a resident tell me recently, they, they prefer reading it first, struggling through the text first without me teaching it and then watching the videos and that helped them learn better. I think any of the above, whatever works for Interesting. you, but you can yeah, just I would, watch the videos right away. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely say, I mean, this is just my own perspective, so I'm sure everyone would be, will be different, but the videos have all the context and I feel like the, the book itself is more like bullet point high yield of what you talk about. And so to read that first, I might not, I don't understand all, I might not understand all the context to have it open while watching the videos or to read it quickly to see like the outline of the videos and then watch and learn the videos and then go back to that later as almost kind of a review of, okay, do I know all this information or if not, do I have to go study it further? At least that's the approach that I've been using yeah. so far that I've found yeah. helpful. That's probably how it was, it was intended to is just you crack open the book or not. Right. And you just watch the videos and it's, it's, I'm trying to spoon feed it to you. I don't want that to sound bad or anything. I'm trying to gently teach the material to you so you can easily understand it. And uh, without struggling so much, you know, I mean, I learned, you know, the textbooks are like this thick. It's, and that's, it's wild. Yeah. I, I mean, I've got, I've gotten to this point now <laughs> with, without probably ever reading thoroughly through every, all the textbooks you get, because it's just too dense. I feel like at least when I, when I'm talking to pre-med students similarly and helping them with MCAT prep, I tell them like they get, they get these seven, the series of seven different textbooks for each different topic. And most of the time they spend so much time just reading, highlighting and reviewing the textbooks that are so dense that they forget 80% of that material rather than actually doing practice questions, then reviewing the high yield points based off of the questions and actually struggling through the material. And so I feel like this is helps a similar way of studying where you can really just get what you need to know. And because also we're learning every day in rotations in residency even more context. So not saying textbooks are bad, but most of my peers in med school, like, which was basically our whole class, no one was like reading through every word of every textbook. It was more the lecture slides or honestly, these other amazing teachers that are, you know, like Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, these types of resources that now exist that really are good at condensing down the information, yeah. which I feel like is what PM&R recap is for yes. uh, podiatry residents. Yes. You know, when it didn't exist when I was training, of course. Right. So I, I wish I had this, but I, you know, I was learning from the books that are this thick and, and, you know, they're like over a thousand pages long. You're just reading each page and you're teaching it. You're, you're teaching yourself from the book and the, the, the words are written in difficult language, uh, kind of sometimes just strange language, uh, and, and word choices that they make and, uh, structure and everything. And you're teaching yourself and thinking, yeah, I, I guess I, yeah, I, I guess I understand that. I mean, there's no one there over your shoulder to tell you, yeah, you, you're understand. You're thinking about that topic correctly. That's that's exactly correct. The way you just kind of said it to yourself, yeah, that's it. No one's there to do that. You're just saying, I guess I understand it. Now turn the page, and you're kind of taking that leap of faith that you hope you got it. I I wanted to have my videos say, yeah, this is this is what it is. This is how to think about it. Here it is in text form, but here it is also me explaining it and reassuring you, cementing that content in that that you got it. This is the correct way to think about it. And it helps to have that just conversationally in plain English, someone telling you that. Yeah, I know. I think I, that's the I, best way to say it. The plain, plain English, just your, <laughs> just talking about PM and R topics that we need to know, but um, it's in a way that's easier to understand. Yeah. And I think it's easier to learn something too, when you learn it 
and then someone tells you, yes, that's correct, like right on the spot as I'm doing in the video, rather than learning it and reading it and not knowing if you're understanding it correctly, it's not going to stick as well if you're kind of wondering, I think I understand that correctly, but I'm not really sure. Turn the page. Let's continue on. You know, if you have me saying in your ear, saying like, this is, this is the right way to think about it and, you know, confirmed, done, it's going to stick in your brain better. And so, um, that's what I wanted to give to people and, and have them pass boards with way less stress, way more comfort, way more work-life balance doing it and studying it about the fourth of the time or an eighth of the time that I had to uh, spend doing it, kind of give you your life back a little bit. And uh, now, that was my hope. That's awesome. And th this might be this kind of a, a side topic, but you just mentioned it about passing boards. Is it, do, I don't know if you know this, I heard recently they just changed the boards uh, passing like the way it's scored to essentially the bottom 10% is an automatic fail. Do you have any information on that? I will need to look into that. I know that you, the failure rate for, it fluctuates each year, uh, but I, I know that the failure rate can be really harsh. Yeah, for, for I think, these two yeah, because I remember, I think it used to be like if you hit a certain, I think this is a recent change or maybe they're talking about making this change. I'd have, I'm going to mm -hmm. check it as well, but um it used to be like just if you don't hit a certain score, you're failing. I think now yeah. it, it's more of a percentile thing. So just they take the everyone takes the test, they take the bottom ten percent, and that's everyone there fails. And if you're above that, uh, everyone passes. That's, that's too rough because yeah, that's because then you're I like guaranteeing failure every year. You're you're correct. What they have been doing is that once you meet a minimum standard, you pass, and just there's no threshold, like there's no number of people who have to fail. So if they're, if they're doing that where there's 10% who must fail each time, I disagree with that strongly. I don't think that should be the way, um, you know, the, yeah, yeah. And so I don't know the more, the more people can be empowered, I think, you know, to pass these things and not let it run their life. I think the better. And so hope we can do that. That's kind of our mission. Absolutely. And besides just boards review, I actually know, and I, I guess this might be on the boards a little bit, but um, it's slightly separate, is you also have ultrasound teaching, which mm -hmm. is something I'm very excited for as a PM&R yeah. resident is learning ultrasound. I feel like, I, I could be wrong here, I feel like physiatrists get the most training out of any specialty with yeah. ultrasound, at least for MSK. That's probably true. Um, probably true. Can you t talk more about the, the ultrasound teaching that you have as well? We actually, mm -hmm. during orientation, watched one of your, your intro to ultrasound videos. That's cool. That's so cool. Yeah, ultrasound guidance came about. I did not think of the name. That was my partner, uh, Dr. Alex Lloyd, uh, who joined with me on the ultrasound guidance uh, venture. Uh, I, I love that name. He came up with it. I think it's great. It's, it just describes we, we want to guide you uh, in, the, in the teaching ultrasound. But that came about, I was, I was middle of my way through PGY3 year and still terrified to touch an ultrasound probe. It was, and at this point, I'm I've done so many ultrasound procedures, so many um, scans on myself and models and patients and everything. It's, it's an extension of my body at this point. But I started out terrified of doing ultrasound. If we're in a group scan or some big lecture where there's a form different machines and you go around to stations, I would always stand in the back. I didn't want to touch the probe. I was too afraid of embarrassing myself. I don't know what I'm looking at. And so we, we, we want, I wanted people to not ever have to feel that way and to think like you could really empower yourself with some good, good teaching. You could, you could, you know, take the machine on a weekend. I think most of the time residents will have access to some kind of machine that they can get into, you know, into the clinic and practice with. So I thought, man, what, wouldn't it be great if you just loaded up a video, not a textbook, right? But a, a video that, sh that scans along with you and tells you how to scan it and you could just scan along and do it. And so, um, uh, you know, the two of us, uh, Dr. Alex Lloyd and I thought it was, it was a good idea and let's, let's make it. And, um, I'll tell you, it's tough. It's tough to coordinate when it's not just you. It's tough to coordinate things. Um, uh, so we had to wait a while until we could, you know, fly out together and get this done. And it's been a lot of fun. And Got it. We made yeah, I have to imagine that's with it too. That's harder to yeah. film, like showing the ultrasound while getting it like a almost like a screen recording of what it looks like and putting that all together. Yeah, because technology will fail you sometimes, and a certain cable will malfunction, or the machine you got is not actually transmitting the uh, video properly to the computer and you're thinking, oh gosh, this, this whole, we spent all this vacation time, you know, to get together and do this and now it's not working. So yeah, it can be, it can be stressful troubleshooting that, but it's been really fun. I just, I just, ultrasound is fun. It's natural for physiatrists, you know, so uh, we needed, we needed a better resource to teach people that wasn't a textbook because I do not think a textbook is a way to learn ultrasound. It's too static, you know? Yeah. Ultrasound's 3D and the, the textbook is 2D. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. So, 
how, is that completed or is um are you continuing to add videos for i know i've seen yeah. some updates even to the pmnr recap lectures so what's your plan yes. i guess with all that yes uh luckily ultrasound you know anatomy doesn't really change unless you fast forward 200 million years you know anatomy probably probably is not going to change so luckily the ultrasound anatomy the only things that would change with what we're doing there is if we think we did a procedure on the atlas and it could have been improved on, maybe we would go back and do it again. Or if, if 10 years from now there are better quality machines and maybe we need to update the videos with better quality machines. Otherwise, there's not too much updating to do with ultrasound uh, videos. With PMNR Recap, yes, I do go through. I, I kind of stealth update the videos and I do. I make a little note of it uh, on the videos page that people could see. This was this was updated at this time, and we publish uh, new editions of the textbook that go along with it, so people get updated text, you know, at, while they're seeing the updated video. So yes, that content is updated as new guidelines and you know, et cetera, come out within PMNR. But with ultrasound, there's not too much updating required. We also uh, have 160, 170. It's got to be something like that videos of ultrasound, uh, ultrasound, there's like 90 procedures. And then uh, I don't know how many um, 80 some diagnostic scans that we have. Uh, oh, wow. So, so I, I, kind of I haven't checked like... out the ultrasound stuff. I actually don't know <laughs> if I got that originally. But that sounds like pretty in depth. <laughs> it's extremely in depth. Uh, it was a huge amount of work. I actually personally edited all the videos myself. And so just each time we, we got the diagnostic atlas out versus getting the procedure atlas out, it was just a massive weight off and so proud of just getting that out there and sharing it with people. Um, really, really proud of that. Um, so yeah, your, your question, uh, I ramble a lot, but your question is, is it done? Yeah, probably the diagnostic and interventional stuff is, is mostly done. There's always like a, maybe a carpal tunnel release under ultrasound guidance that we could maybe add in the future, some cool stuff. Uh, peripher yeah, peripheral isn't that nerve kind stimulator of implants. Relatively new. The, those yeah, releases exactly. they're doing and like trigger and finger releases and things like that. Yeah, we actually actually do. Funnily enough, we do have a trigger finger release uh, procedure um, on there, which uh, Dr. Lloyd did, which he performed very well. But um, yes, yes, there's some newer things that as they come out and get more established, uh, we can add those in. It's also just kind of hard sometimes. You have to talk to a company and say, hey, can we use one of your you know, stimulators or whatever, and show it in this video. And there's a lot of, I guess, uh, networking that has to take place with that. But yeah, I mean, there's also other areas of ultrasound that are not just MSK and neuro, you know, so internal medicine and emergency medicine. And we're definitely exploring ways uh, to maybe play with that too. We obviously don't have the expertise to ultrasound the, you know, uh, like anything in here, basically, except muscles. <laughs> and so right. we have to get some help for that. So there are definitely some Makes thoughts sense. going around. There's just not enough hours in the day. Sure I feel you. I, I feel you for <laughs> sure. Is there, um, um, do you find for the ultras, because I feel like PM&R, the recap lectures, it's everyone that's a physiatrist is going to be watching those. But have you found that other specialties are starting to get the ultrasound subscriptions? Because I imagine there's people even outside of PM&R that are doing these types of musculoskeletal procedures. Oh. I suspect that there's fam there is a lot of sports medicine fellows uh, who do, and they're probably family medicine trained as the bulk of them are. So yeah, that, um, but it's hard to trace that. It's hard to trace that and know. I, I guess we could be weird about it and look at the email address that signs up and try to like figure out from that, you know, yeah. what specialty they're or you in. Could just we, you or know, you could just ask uh, like where someone is in, in medical training <laughs> when they sign up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Be, we actually, I, yes, we kind of, played with that a little bit. Um, but we, yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely a thought. So I can't answer that for you. Um, I'm not sure at this point. I'm, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. I, I'm no, assuming most no worries. Of it I was more MSK just curious just because sports. I feel like I'm thinking about it uh, now. Now it's more my business mind, uh, moving, <laughs> but, uh, like mm -hmm. the, mar the market for PMNR recap is limited to all the PMNR, uh, residents attendings i guess and med students before their additions but ultrasounds gonna i feel like becoming more widely used by everyone i mean even uh like you see like mm -hmm. the butterfly and the different portable ultrasounds mm -hmm. that people are getting i feel like i feel like in a long enough time period people will be walking around with their little portable ultrasound versus I stethoscopes I but i don't know maybe, I know. maybe that's a a bad prediction no i don't think it is i i have that same thought almost every day. And one of my students recently told me that their school gave them an ultrasound probe. And it yeah, I saw that. Mind. I think I don't, I don't know if it was <laughs> Temple or one, one of the, one of the med schools that someone donated like the entire class butterfly uh, ultrasounds or something like this. And I was like, wow, I'm kind of jealous because those things aren't, aren't that cheap right now. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous too. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think the stethoscope, uh, the the ultrasound probe is the physiatrist stethoscope, right? Right. I, I think, yeah, and I think it's going to increasingly become that, which I think is what you were saying. Cool. So then, um, any like further plans? And I, I know you said you're dabbling with maybe ultrasound for other areas, but what would you say your mission overall now is with PM and R recap and everything you're doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think we, we probably want to try to reach a wider audience with PM&R Recap. We also want to build in more features to it. Uh, so there are some extra features in the, in the pipeline, not yet ready to announce, but they're in development, which is going to be fun that just come with every account. You just get this uh, with PM&R Recap. Um, uh, so there's some fun stuff within that that we want to do. We also do want to expand and try to reach more attending physicians, maybe uh, uh, continuing med medical education credits, uh, CME credits is something I've always thought about doing and haven't quite gotten around to it. Uh, give me like 36 said, hours. Only so many give times me, in the day. So much me, time in the day. Give me 36 hours. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think that there are some other areas we want to expand into. Um, but... Uh, hard just yeah so uh no it is for sure i mean i i know from like running a business related to pre-meds just you know yeah. there's always so much to do even if it's not just what you love the most which is the education part or the mentoring part there's a million other things that go along with I with know. running the business i actually thought uh when in 2019 part part of me thought i could i could throw this website up there and it just exists you right, know, exactly. Like and everyone just runs wife. to it. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I will say that you yeah, have really good. Go uh, I, w I, was, I will say you have really good word of mouth, though, because I think that a lot of students are really enjoying the videos and or I keep saying students, but now we're residents, but uh, a lot and the residents as well. So I feel like word of mouth is, is passing around the, the resources and it's been very beneficial for people. They, they flatter. It's extremely flattering. It's extremely humbling. Uh, none of this I take for granted. I, you know, I wake up every day. I can't believe it's become so popular. Um, and uh, I, I'm just incredibly thankful, you know, for everybody trusting me with this really serious, you know, education. And it's their, it's their future. It's the board exam and everything. Um, it's, it's extremely humbling uh, and just really touching. It's extremely touching, you know, to, to get emails from someone saying, I, I, you know, boards was tough for me a couple different times. And I, I finally passed it uh, after watching your videos and, and, um, you know, doing your, your practice questions. That's so rewarding. I can't describe it. It's, it's just a really humbling and I'm extremely grateful and thankful. Uh, yeah, no, uh, that's, for, for it. that's really awesome. So one, one last question for you and then, and then we'll wrap it up. What would you recommend to a, let's say a medical student who's interested in get, getting into PM and R as their future specialty? PM and R is so broad. <laughs> it's, it's neuromusculoskeletal medicine. It's neuro MSK. I wish that wasn't such a mouthful because I think it's a more apt description, but, but it's neuro MSK and neuro MSK, you know, neuro ortho MSK is so broad that you can th think of, think of things that you might be interested in that you might want to do and, and push to experience them. I wish I had pushed to experience some earlier choices of specialty of mine um, earlier so that I could have known faster had I wanted to do those things, you know, and I could have experienced PM&R sooner perhaps. But I think, I think try really early to get exposure to it and get in and just honestly, just internet search, uh, physiatrist or, or sports medicine physician or pain medicine physician. It's such a broad field that you can probably find something that, that suits you inpatient, outpatient, um, procedures, no procedures, et cetera. Uh, consults only, uh, or, or just diagnostic tests, EMGs. It's so broad. You can probably find something that suits you, but I think, yeah. I think there's also peds your, too, for if anyone likes peds, uh, which with. is absolutely adorable. Uh, there, there's a peds physiatrist in, in my office and there's always, you know, extremely cute kiddos coming in and running up and down the hallways. And I've got a couple of young kids and it just, um, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great specialty. You know, there's, there's probably something you can find that you really like within it. And uh, it's amenable to putting yourself in that niche and just doing that niche of PM and R. You know, you don't have to do everything within it. And so I think it's a really fun specialty. But I think try your best early on to get associated with your own academic department if you have one or a local physiatrist and start there. I think just get a starting point and push through that starting point and use that as a launch pad to somewhere else within PM and R. 
and just keep going, keep getting the exposure, keep getting the reps in the repetitions of, of, um, exposure to the field of PMNR. And I think it just, it will eventually the car will run itself and it will just keep going, you know, and then you're along for the ride, which is a great fun ride. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, it's been fun for me so far. And I'm only basically a month into actual PMNR residency because I had to finish that first intern year, which went well, thank God. But uh, now now I'm getting to the stuff that I've been I've been wanting to do. So it's been very exciting. Intern year is that fun year where the whole time you're just <laughs> like this. Just let me at it. Just let me yeah, at it. Exactly. Let me do it. And uh, it's kind of like, no, you got to hold yourself back. You'll get there. You'll get there. You know, first you got to do surgery for six months or whatever. It is. Yeah. yeah. And it's just kind of funny because you won't be doing that in PMNR, but that's the way it's set up, I guess. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that'll change anytime soon, but we'll see. No. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dr. D'Angelo, for coming on. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I feel like uh, everyone got a lot of insights if they're listening or watching this. So, for those who are interested in, signing up for PMNR Recap or checking it out, where can they go? And also, um, where can they follow you if you have anywhere that you're most active? Yeah, we are on, so it's actually PMRRecap.com uh, is where we are at with our website. Um, we are on Twitter. It's at PMR Recap. We're on Instagram as well. Um, uh, maybe branching out to a couple other socials over the next uh, several months or so. But um, that's where we are. Again, PM, PMRrecap.com is where you can find us. And um, yeah, awesome. that's... Um, All right. So you heard it. If, if you're interested, go check out PMRrecap.com. We'll probably have a link below the video or the podcast where you can uh, go check it out. And thanks so much for coming on. Adam, it's been a big honor. Thank you so much for even inviting me in the first place. Uh, major, major thank you. Absolutely.